let's talk about tutorials. Every game needs one, and if you think that yours doesn't, you're wrong. Every game teaches their player how to play the game differently. You have Cuphead, which makes an entire different scene for the player to play around in. Or you have games like Mario that start off really simple, teaching you one or two mechanics at a time and then to add more and more layers as you go. But that's mostly game design stuff. Let me show you how to actually do that in GDevelop. So to begin with, I have this game here that I opened up. It's the Notavania example game. And I've added three tutorial blocks. Just images on screen to tell the player which button to press. Importantly, the walk is first on this first platform. And then just after the jump, the jump key is shown. And then just before the first interaction with an enemy, the key prompt for attacking is there as well. So if I start the game, you'll see the A and D keys work. And then I'm told to jump. So now I know that the player knows how to do the jumping because they've gotten beyond this point. And then I'm told to attack. And I can do it here before the enemy gets to me in a pretty safe way. The enemy's pretty slow and uh, not a big problem. And then I can continue on with the rest of the game because those are the only buttons. But this game has a tutorial in the menus section. So some players might have already learned the key presses before they start the game. So we're going to set it up so that each of these prompts only shows up when they're actually needed. So make a group called tutorial. And then go back to the events and add an action for hiding the tutorial group. We'll also start a timer called move tutorial. Make a scene timer. And then we'll check the scene timer. Move tutorial is greater than, let's say two seconds. And if it is, show tutorial for run. There we go. And we will also set up a scene variable that is going to block off how that works. So we'll go structure, move, tutorial, boolean true, oh, no, boolean false, and apply. Okay. And we'll set it up so that when the boolean variable for this is false, and we are standing there for two seconds, we'll show the timer. And then we'll change this. So if the player is moving, If the hero hitbox, which is the actual character, is moving, we'll set the scene variable for move back to true. And so the way this works out is once you start moving, this will be set to true, which will turn this off and cancel this out. Okay, let's change this to key pressed. A or D. Okay. There it is. Maybe make that longer. Five seconds? So I'll preview the game, and if the player stands there not sure what the presser would do, it's going to pop up like that. And then the player will move, and because there's nothing telling them how to jump. And so we'll do the same thing, but we'll make a, another variable for jump. Boolean. Um, that needs to be a global variable. Actually, I'm going to move all of those to be global variables instead. Global Boolean. So now we'll do the same thing basically. We'll copy this. Fall one. If the player is in collision with fall one, so they fall down this pit. We'll set this boolean 
to true. And this time if it is true, we will show the tutorial for jump. And we'll do this once. Okay, let's try that. So if I stand still for five seconds, and then if I walk forward and fall, shoot. Let's make this beginning of scene only. There we go. All right, so if I walk forward, it didn't happen, but when the game starts again, there we go. Now it's there. So now I know to jump. And we only need it in the first pit because once the player's gone past the first pit, you know that the player can jump. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to get over here. But I have two more examples here I want to show you. So the first one is the 3D tile builder game. So what I want to do is teach the player or tell the player to do these things without writing text up on screen or something. And a really useful tool for that is actually the extension Shockwave. All right, so I just need to create a shape painter object, call it shockwave, add the behavior to it. All right. And then I will make a new group here for the tutorial. And I'll use a timer. Timer will be called tutorial start. And I'll create a shock wave object at the center point of the button every 0.5 seconds and restart the timer. So we'll start doing that. Nope. On the UI layer. There we go. 0.5 seconds is going to do that, and I can change the settings and make that bigger or smaller here in the behavior. But we'll just leave it the way it is for now. And so we'll do that when the game starts to tell you to do this. And the same way we used Boolean variables before, we'll do the same thing here. We'll use false. first house is false. So as long as the boolean variable for first house is false, this timer is going to continue to reset and continue to create that shockwave object on the point. And then if the house is selected, we will set the boolean variable for that to true. So when we buy our first house, click on the tooltip and then buy, it'll go away. And then we want to progressively tell the player to now do the next thing. So we'll do the same thing, but this time we'll create a new variable for the other two buildings. First stone, first wood. Okay, same thing. And so now we're going to change it so that if the condition is now true, so they've clicked on that and they've created their first house. Now instead, we'll be doing first stone and first wood and creating these at the position of the mine and the lumber yard. All right. So when I place this, it should start telling me to place those. 
because we have zero wood and zero stone. So the next thing to do is place these to get stone and wood. But we need to again add in those points where once we buy that thing, we'll change the boolean for stone and first wood. And now we know the player's first move is going to be to grab this and place it. And then the game's going to tell them to place one of these two. Place it. So they'll start gaining stone. And now they need to place the lumber yard. There we go. So now they'll know to place these three things and they can start playing the game properly. You could also do showing and hiding bits of UI. So I could hide these instead of pinging them with the shockwave. And one last very quick one to do that I find useful myself is a pop-up for when you get in range of something. So this E right here is there all the time to tell you how to interact with this character. But instead, if we want to make it so that the E only shows up when you walk up to the character and you can actually press E to talk to them, we can do that. By going into the events, already it's set up to hide when you start talking with them, so we'll just change how that works. So instead, we're going to make it hide when we're within this range of them. Or sorry, we're going to make it show then and hide when we're not. So when we're not in range of the character to talk to them, it's going to hide it. And then it's going to show when we are in range of the character. This is using the distance between two objects. You can also use distance between two points expression or some other way of telling that the player is within a certain range of the thing you want to interact with. So now when I walk up, it's not there, but when I get close, it pops up. That's something you'll see in lots of different games. It tells the player when and how to interact with something. Hopefully this video will help you start setting up your tutorials, but for now, check out this video.